Build It, Make It, Play It. Hello, welcome to Build It, Make It, Play It. This is Emma's House Gets Extended, Part 2. If you haven't checked out Part 1, head on back, you're missing out. Tell you what, I'll even put the link in the right hand corner for you. So yeah, part two. Wow, this video was in demand. I don't think I have ever had so many comments on my channel asking me when the next video is going to be coming up. So thank you so much for all of your support recently. It's been amazing. So what to expect from part two? Well, we need to create the interiors for Emma's gorgeous brand new family. And we're starting off the renovations with Henry and Sophie's bedrooms. And I have to admit, I think there's going to be a part three, a part four and a part five. There's a lot to do on this house. So if you haven't subscribed already, hit that subscribe button so you're first to hear when the next video comes up. So, shall we get on with these renovations then? We've got a toddler and a baby room to create. So there was a bit of chatter on the part one comments about what you could actually do with this extended Emma's house. And it's a gorgeous house that's so, so modular. It's really, really versatile. So I wanted to kind of pull my extension apart to begin with, just to show you what other layouts you could do. First up, let's disconnect all of these modular sections. And we are pretty much back to how Emma's house looked originally. And I just wanted to switch the layout around a little bit so that you have the tall attic space sections either side of the doorway and what is going to be Emma's bedroom. I think this looks like a really nice layout. It looks super, super balanced. And you also get to have a great big roof terrace slap bang in the middle of the house. Right, let's bring that taller section back into the middle again. And I want to show you next what it looks like if you bring that front door area in line with the rest of the house. It's really difficult to get these to go side by side properly because we have these great big connector bricks sticking out of one of the sections. But anyway, you get the idea. And next, I want to show you what it looks like if you start to build Emma's house upwards rather than outwards. Let's take off that attic space and the roof terrace. And I want to put one of those bedroom sections right on the top so we have a three-storey building. Let's just pop that roof terrace down there for now. And on goes the attic. There we go. This is what a section of Emma's house could look like if it was a three-storey house. But anyway, I have plans for my original layout. So I'm going to put it all back together again how I did it in part one. But I have to say thank you so much for all of your suggestions about how you could mix up the layout of Emma's house. I hope this has inspired you to create your own extended Emma's house and actually realise that you can do it in many, many different ways. Taking off that attic space and we're pulling out the first of our rooms and it's going to be a bedroom for little Henry. Now, we have not met little Henry yet in the Lego Friends Girls on a Mission TV series. So we've had this weird indiscrepancy between Liz in the TV series and Liz in Andrea's family house. So your guess is as good as mine as to how old Henry actually should be in the Lego universe. But I'm going to say he is a toddler and he's going to get a toddler bedroom and little Henry wanted to have a rocket ship bedroom so that's what I'm going to create for him. So let's get started. First up we're going to change the colour of Henry's bedroom floor and his walls. So we are ditching these purple walls. Out they all come, there we go, we are literally back to three windows again. So on the front of the house, underneath these three windows, we have a white strip. If I'm going to change the colour of Henry's bedroom floor, I need to make sure this white strip underneath the windows stays consistent so the front of the house still looks nice, which is why I brought in these great big white plates. I'm going to attach Henry's new carpet to these base plates. And even though I'm changing the colour of Henry's walls, I need to keep this purple colour consistent at the front of the house. So yes, Henry gets white walls. Popping that purple pillar at the front on the other side and just building out the wall line. I'm even using white pillars with butterfly stickers on them. I've turned that around. You never saw that. And I'm building out the end of the wall with a load of two by ones and I've got a plan for this section. Right, we have a white wall plate and I'm going to do something a little bit special here. 
So when I'm not creating Lego videos for you all to enjoy, I actually work as a designer. So I'm very used to all of these different pieces of design software. So I decided to implement my design skills and create some custom stickers for these renovations. And I'm drawing out some bunting for Henry's wall. And of course it's got to be space themed. So we have blue bunting with yellow stars. And here's the final result printed onto some transparent sticky vinyl. Right, let's pop that into place. Oh, I'm so running out of Lego at the moment. I need to go to a Lego store. I'm using wall plates and pillars from all sorts of different sets at the moment. Right, let's hold all of these wall pieces together with a really nice dark blue series of bricks and topping it off with white bricks. And that creates a really nice blue border around Henry's room. Right, we're on to our first piece of furniture and it's going to be Henry's bed and I'm going to create a cabin bed for him. Starting off with two dark blue base plates and look, do you recognise this duvet cover? It's from Stephanie's room. I thought it fitted Henry's space theme really, really well so I had to use it. Just building up the left hand side of that bed and I'm going to put a blue stud brick on the top and I shall show you why in a minute. And we're building up the right hand side of the bed and because this is a cabin bed the bed's going to be quite high and I know you are all so so concerned about your micro and mini dolls staying safe so don't worry Henry is not going to fall out of bed he's going to be fine. Right we're on to building out the bottom of the bed and we're going to be putting a little clip brick onto there and topping it off with these curved bricks. Right, we need to start raising the level of this bed up a little bit and I'm going to start by using a little cabinet. And Henry can store all of his extra toys in here. And we're going to support the head end of the bed with these blue short window pieces. Oh, I've just pinged one off. In you go, there we go. And finishing off the rest of that bed with some blue bricks. So in my Andrea's family house build, there were lots of people who were concerned about how Andrea got up into her bunk bed. So this time round, I have added a ladder. Woohoo! Henry can get up into his cabin bed properly. Right, we need some extra pieces to go onto that blue stud brick. So every toddler needs to have a drink right by their bed. So Henry gets his own little water bottle. And he needs to have a soft toy on his bed as well. So Henry gets to have this dark blue dinosaur cuddly. Right, let's pop that into place in the corner of the room. Squash it down, make sure that's secured in there. There we go, one cabin bed. And next to Henry's bed, I want to build a couple of chest of drawers. Super, super simple. Grab a couple of stud bricks and put some studs onto the front. And we're going to top it off with some gold stars for the drawer handles. Next up, we're building out a blue and gold lamp. Look at that, quite effective. On to our next set of chest of drawers and building it in exactly the same way with those gold stars of the drawer handles. But instead, on top, little Henry is going to get a fish tank. Right, let's pop those into place next to the bed. Oh, the lamp is too big, it's hitting on that window frame. Right, let's take that out and reposition it. <laughs> I've got bits stuck underneath the cabin bed. I'm going to have to shake that out. There we go. Okay, so I'm just putting it one stud forward so it's not going to be touching on that window frame now. Do you know what? I've hit on a new idea. I can actually get it flush against that window if I just move it over a little bit. There we go. The lamp is touching the window rather than the window frame. See, there's always a solution to a problem. Okay, so we're going to finish off the top of that wall line and just making sure we have that consistent purple colour on the front of the house. Right, in the other corner of the bedroom, I'm going to be building out Henry a little table and chair set. So, starting off with a little white plate and adding some white studs on the bottom and adding in these tapered white barrel bricks. On the back of the table, I want to make a little pin board area. So I'm just building that up with some stud bricks. And look, he's got a little birthday invitation. Every toddler gets invited to tons of birthday parties. And we need a little space inspired graphic. Next up, we are building out a great big stack of paper for Henry to draw on. Oh look, here's one of his creations. I'm just going to pop that on a little jumper brick. On goes a blue pen pot and a little purple pen. Next up, we're building out a tiny little chair and it's going to have a little jumper stud on the front so Henry can sit on it properly. It needs to be pretty low to the ground, so I'm just going to be adding some studs onto the bottom. And finishing off the back of the chair with a blue tile. 
There we go, one table and chair set. Oh look, little Henry's back to test it out. See, he fits onto that jumper brick perfectly. I don't think he's too keen on finishing his picture. Off he goes to do something else. Let's pop that into place in the bedroom. In goes the chair and I'm just going to move it away from that chest of drawers just to give them a bit more space. Right, on to the next piece of furniture. And oh, oh dear, <laughs> pinging wall panels. Next, we're building out a shelving unit for all of Henry's toys. And I'm using sliding door panels to make the shelves. And they're really, really effective because they have this little lip on the front that holds everything in place. Just building up the edge of the shelves with these two two by ones. Now our first toy item is this little red train that came in the 2020 Lego Friends Advent Calendar and I'm just going to be adding on this little wind up toy key onto the side of it. Now I could not create Henry's bedroom without giving him a Lego collection. So I'm just building out this very simple blue box and filling it with nano blocks. I know they're not official Lego but they are the perfect scale for little Henry to have a Lego collection. So cute, aren't they? Popping that into place on that bottom shelf. Ooh, make sure I don't knock that train over. And just capping it off with another one of those sliding door panels to make a shelf. Right, I'm adding on a little bit of detailing onto the front of these shelves. So I'm popping in some stud bricks either side on this second shelf. And I have this double stud brick to go on the outside of the shelf. And you shall see in a second what this is for. Now the reason why I didn't use a white wall pillar on the end of this bedroom is because I wanted to tie this shelving unit into the wall. So I'm just using this little L bracket to tie in this shelving unit to the wall so the shelving unit doesn't wobble around and tip forward. I'm building up the rest of the wall with two 2x1 two bricks. And I'm adding on some gold star detailing onto those stud bricks. Make sure they're all straight. The next toy to go on to little Henry's toy shelf is the fire engine that came in this year's shopping mall set. He must have absolutely loved it when he visited the toy shop, so I'm guessing that Robert and June bought it for him. Now Henry does love a good walkie-talkie and I've removed the little pink heart and I've replaced it with one of the superhero dot tiles. Power. And of course he needs a cosmic ray gun. Pew pew, pew pew. Right, let's top that shelving unit off and finishing the wall line off with those dark blue and white bricks. And on that double stud brick, I've got to put an Omnidroid tile on there. Wow, that's difficult to say. Popping a little blue jumper brick in front of that toy shelf. Oh dear, I've knocked out the train. Right, that is going to be held in place with a NASA rocket. Now that came with one of the fairly recent minifigures. So my next addition for Henry's room has been inspired by the most amazing Lego Ideas mock I have seen for a while. I absolutely loved it and I supported it. And do you know what? It won the grand prize and I'm really, really happy about that. It's the Adventures of the USS Cardboard. How cute is this mock? I love it. You know what it's like with toddlers and cardboard boxes. They can make them into pretty much anything. So Henry has made his cardboard box into a rocket ship. So here we go. We're going to make a cardboard box rocket ship. It is super, super simple. I'm using the brown chest of drawers that came with Andrea's family house and I'm tipping it onto its back to make a cardboard box shape. Popping on a brown jumper brick and then two brown tiles either side and adding on this brown angled brick is the rocket nose cone. Now I found these glow in the dark stickers in a local craft shop and I thought they were absolutely perfect for this. So I'm going to stick them either side of what I guess is the cardboard box and adding on some yellow lights to the front of this rocket. Right, we need to create some rocket blasters for the back of this cardboard rocket, so I'm building it up with a couple of stud bricks and adding on these two silver barrels to the top stud bricks. We could pretend these are baked bean cans or something, couldn't we? But we need to add in a little rocket burner look, so I'm adding in these red flowers into the end of the barrels. So I want to add a flag onto Henry's rocket ship and yeah, okay, so there might be a sticker on the other side and I don't really want to remove that, but you never saw that. I'm just going to spin that around and stick on a glow in the dark sticker on the clear side. There we go, one little flag. Pop that on top and let's get that fixed into place in the bedroom. 
and it's literally anchored down with those two stud bricks at the bottom. In comes another jumper plate and Henry has some instructions on how to build a rocket. And I have this boom tile and I thought it would be perfect as a little round rug. There we go, one space themed toddler bedroom for Henry. Let's bring him back in, he can try out his cardboard box rocket. He looks happy and at home there, what do you think? And here's a spare yellow balloon that Henry brought home after his birthday in the Heart Lake City Park. Oh, it's so cute, I love this bedroom. Topping off his room with all of these pink tiles and connector bricks. Henry's toddler room done and on to Sophie's nursery. Pulling off the attic space and out comes that bedroom. This used to be Emma's original bedroom, so it has the wall panel that suits Emma, so this needs to come out. And I also want to include a wall panel on the other side of the room, so all of these wall pillars need to come out. Plus, I'm also making the floor line much, much bigger, so I'm adding in these extra white base plates and clipping them together with these purple bricks. On goes another base plate and I need to tie this in with another purple brick. So out come all of those wall panels again. There we go, base plates connected and on those wall pillars go again. So yes, I don't have enough purple wall pillars, so I'm having to use a wall panel from the Beauty and the Beast castle, but I'll spin that around. And again, you never saw that, did you? No. And we have a nice clear wall plate to use for another custom sticker. Yes, I made some lovely flowery bunting for Sophie and I made it in exactly the same way as Henry's bunting, making sure all of those triangular bunts go onto that little piece of string and then print it again onto sticky see-through vinyl. There we go, Sophie has her own bunting. So cute! Let's pop that into place. And I need to build out the rest of that wall line with the pillars from the other side. So I'm just going to rejig some of these purple bricks on the top just to hold all of these wall pillars together properly. There we go. I'm adding on those pink tiles again. And doing exactly the same on the other side. So starting off with a smaller brick and then putting those longer bricks on to hold those wall panels together. Okay, we are on to Sophie's first piece of furniture and it's going to be her cot. Starting off with a white base plate and a pink tile and then adding on a white 2x4. Because I have plans to make this cot slightly taller, I'm just popping some studs onto the bottom of that base plate. And to make the bars for the cot, I'm just using these bar bricks and you can find these in so many Lego Friends sets. There we go, we have the basis of a cot. And holding all of these together with some pink tiles. And I'm adding on a pink jumper brick because I want to add a mobile onto this cot. So I've grabbed the gold chandelier fitting that came from the Beauty and the Beast castle and I'm adding on some pink and purple flowers onto the end of it. Popping a rod through the middle and adding on a pink flower just to hold it into place. Now we need to connect this to something so I'm just adding on a little connector arm and popping it onto a white pole. And that sits perfectly onto that jumper brick. Now can you see why I put the studs on the bottom, otherwise it makes it way too tall. Right, let's test this out. In comes little Sophie. So the easiest way to get Sophie into this cot is to take one of these bars out and slide her into place. Otherwise you end up having to just drop her in and she tips upside down and she lands on her head. And that's not a good thing with babies. Right, let's get this into the room and her cot's gonna go right next to her custom Sophie Bunting sticker. And on the other side of the room, I'm going to make a baby changing table. So I'm having to build up this baby changing table with a bit of a hodgepodge of bricks here. So I'm kind of trying to fit them all together in a sort of brick style pattern, just to hold all of these bricks together. And of course, the centerpiece is a draw unit, which is three studs wide, which makes it very, very complicated trying to put it into a structure. And on the top, we add in some pink tiles and a pink jumper brick to hold Sophie into place. And we have some little edging pieces just to hold Sophie in. Building up the back of that baby changing table and adding on some curved bricks. Now to get Sophie to sit properly on this baby changing table, I've had to add a pink flower and this just helps to hold her in place. Adding in a pink drawer. And I'm making a couple of spare nappies out of a white two by one and a tile and a slot in there underneath that drawer. So I'm going to imagine this is a little bit of cotton wool and I'm going to make a lotion bottle. You need a lot of that with a baby. In comes little Sophie to test it out 
And yes, she probably could roll off the other side, but I'm hoping that June or Robert would be there to catch her. Right, let's pop that into place. Next, I want to build just a little pink rug just by the side of the cot, and I'm making it just out of a few tiles. And I'm adding on some pink tiles for my next piece of furniture. So I'm going to attempt to make a rocking chair for June or Robert to sit in. And this was so, so complicated. It took me a long time to work out how to do this. And it's built up by a series of angled bricks and clip bricks and hinge bricks. So holding those L brackets together with a two by one and a curved brick to make the cushion for our seat. And I'm just adding on some more curved bricks to make the arms for the chair. Next, we need to build out the back of the chair in exactly the same way as the cushion. Oh dear, I've got it in the wrong place. There we go, that's better. But actually, I want to make it a little bit taller, so I'm going to use that two by two just to bring up the height of the chair. And that will give June and Robert a little headrest. There we go, one chair, and it clips on to a balcony piece. It rocks really, really well, so I thought it would make a really good rocking base. And I've just made it look a little bit nicer with some see-through pink tiles. There we go, it clips into place and look, it rocks perfectly. And it just clips down onto that balcony piece with that clip brick. And yes, it's a reclining rocking chair. Let's bring in June to test it out. There we go, she looks very comfortable, doesn't she? Down she goes, up she goes. So a rocking chair is not going to rock on a load of studs, so that's the reason why I put in those tiles. So every parent with a newborn baby knows that everything needs to be to hand, so I'm going to make a little table for June and Robert to put all their bits and bobs on. So on that table we have a coffee cup with a lid, health and safety, a biscuit just in case they get hungry, and their mobile phone to hand and a magazine because they're going to be spending a lot of time in that rocking chair. Right, let's pop that into the room. Now I have to put a disclaimer out. Yes, this room is super, super pink. I actually wanted to make a yellow bedroom for Sophie to match her colouring. But do you know what? I don't actually have enough yellow bricks and tiles to do this room properly. And I have so many different shades of yellow, it just would have looked a bit of a mess. And I actually have far more fuchsia pink tiles and bricks than yellow. So I'm really sorry, I've gone for stereotypical pink for a girl's room. Next up, I want to create a little play area for Sophie. And you know those brightly colored ABC123 blocks? I'm going to build some of those. And yes, I have created custom stickers for them. So I printed out loads and loads of 1234s, ABCDs, and I've done them in different colors to suit the blocks they go onto. There we go, one, two, three, four. And with the power of editing, here we are. Hey presto, they're all finished. So you can see straight away that the stickers that go onto the lighter colored blocks are far more effective. The ones that went onto the dark green and the dark purple blocks, yeah, they're not so visible, but anyway, you can just about see them. Let's get these into the room. And I'm just gonna put them in completely randomly and stack them up a little bit. There we go, one baby's nursery for Sophie. Not too full with things. Babies don't really need very much anyway, do they? Okay, let's bring the house back into place. Now, because we have made Henry and Sophie's bedroom so much bigger, we need to build out some more support downstairs. Let's remove some of those dining room chairs because there's going to be a wall there in a second. Now I'm starting off with a wall line for Emma's bedroom. Now Emma needs to have a privacy door going into her room and of course it needs to have a purple door handle. Popping that into place, maybe I'll make a custom sticker for her door as well. Next up we're going to build out this wall line. Can you tell I'm running out of very long flat purple bricks? But I do have this normal big long purple brick just to hold everything together. Topping it off with a white brick and a pink tile. And I've decided because this piece is visible, I'm going to make it pink as well. Okay, so we need a double width wall here to hold Henry and Sophie's bedrooms up. Do you recognize this dragonfly sticker? Yes, this is one of the wall pillars from the front of the house and I'm just going to turn it around so you don't see the sticker. And I'm building up a white pillar line for the other side of our wall support. And on the top, I'm creating this double width archway so the family can still walk through from their kitchen into their new lounge area. And tying this into the existing wall line with these pink bricks. 
Oh dear, sorry, my camera is really loving my dots bracelet right now. Can you tell which one it is? Right, on to the next wall line. And I've decided to make some improvements in the hallway area. I've never understood why we had green going all the way through into the hallway. So taking off that bathroom layer and just pulling everything out. Out come all those pillars and all of those green plates and popping on some shorter green plates on the outside and some white ones on the inside. But I've just realized if we have this two by four brick here, it's going to be sticking right out into the walkway in that hallway. So we need to make that slightly shorter. On go all of those pillars at the front of the house and connecting it back to the main part of the house. I'm just going to neaten up this wall line a little bit. And I've built up an archway in exactly the same way as the middle of the house. There we go, we have matching archways. Oh, neaten up that wall just a little bit more. On goes the bathroom. It's a bit wonky. I seem to have an extra connector brick stuck to the bottom of it from before. And on goes the roof terrace. And we've got our bedrooms going in now. Yay! Popping Sophie's nursery into place. And it needs just a little bit more support underneath where I've added in these extra base plates to make the room bigger. So I'm just going to support it from the underside with this great big long white brick. Push that into place and in comes Henry's bedroom. I love this bedroom so much. And again, I'm just going to support the bottom of that floor just so it's not so wibbly wobbly. Finishing off the top of their bedrooms with some pink tiles. And adding on that attic space. Couple of little refinements to Sophie's bedroom. I'm just gonna move this table so it's up against the wall so we have a bit more space. And Sophie gets to have a little pink teddy. So much pink, wow, it looks like a blancmange has exploded in this room. There we go, we have our first two bedrooms in Emma's extended house. Let's bring in June and Sophie and pop them into the nursery. Oh, she's just so gorgeous. And here comes little Henry to test out his bedroom. And of course he needs to have a space helmet to go into his space rocket, so we have broken Benny's helmet here and popping him into his cardboard rocket ship. Oh, he looks so at home there, doesn't he? He loves it. So, what do you think? Let me know in the comments. I love hearing from you all. Two bedrooms down and lots more to do. Yes, there's going to be a few more parts to this series, I think. So don't forget to subscribe so you're first to hear when the next videos go online. Thank you so much again for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to like and also comment. I love hearing from you all. Really loving all of your suggestions at the moment. So keep them rolling in. Until next time, I shall see you later.